This is OMS Voices, an Amos podcast. I'm Bill Klaproth, and with me is Dr. Dan Mira, who is here to discuss medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw, or MRANGE. Dr. Mira, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It is great to talk with you. So let's find out about MRANGE. What is MRANGE? Well, MRANGE is an interesting uh, disease process. It's uh, called medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw, and as you alluded to, it's MRANGE. Mm -hmm. It's serious but rare disease of the upper and lower jaws of the mouth. The jaws ultimately have exposed bone that can then become problematic for the patient. Is this where this exposed bone would come out near a tooth? You would feel it at the lower end of a tooth, or is it like literally like coming out of the gum? It could really occur anywhere. Okay. So the patients that don't have uh, any teeth at all mm-hmm. can still have exposed bone. Okay. Or it could be in an area where there is a tooth or where there were previously teeth, maybe after an extraction. We'll get into that potentially more, some of the risk okay. factors, but you can have it anywhere in, in the mouth. Okay, so then how does MRANGE generally present? Are there symptoms or signs we should know of? Yeah, typically so. Now, I will say that some patients it may be asymptomatic, and it might be something that their doctor picks up, the physician, or possibly, maybe even better, their dentist. Uh-huh. Things that they might notice, though, should certainly be pain, would be one. Okay. Maybe some swelling. Okay. They might visualize something that appears a little abnormal, such as the exposed bone. They could maybe all of a sudden find a loose tooth that was uh, previously not the case. Okay. So there's a hmm. variety of, of, of symptoms that exist. You were mentioning uh, risk factors earlier. What are the risk factors for MRANGE? Typically, the patient has to have been exposed to a medication, hence the name medication-related. Mm-hmm. So certain types of medication put the patient at risk for developing it. So this medication is most often uh, recognized by individuals who have, say, osteoporosis or brittle bones. They be prescribed that. It's helpful to prevent further bone loss, may even improve their bone density. And that's important. Why? Well, that minimizes their chance for hip fractures, even spinal compression fractures. As we age, that is a big problem. And so it's a very common oral medication. But there's a subclass of patients that have some malignant disease, Mm -hmm. such as multiple myeloma Uh or something, say, metastatic breast cancer or prostate cancer, where this is used to help ameliorate some of the effects of that treatment. Okay. And so you'll have a variety of patients, uh, but they have different, the impact is different based on why you're receiving the medication. And the most common class would be what's called uh, bisphosphonate. Okay. So as someone is on medication to help them with osteoporosis, that helps build the bone up. That would increase the bone in the jaw and the mouth, and that's why you get this protrusion of potential bone yeah. in the mouth? Well, it's interesting. It's somewhat counterintuitive. So we're trying to maintain bone, but the difference between, say, long bones, hip, other bones, is that the jaw bone has bone that's at the let's say, gum level of the mouth, mm-hmm. that's called alveolar bone, and has okay. more turnover. It has teeth in oh. it, or even if you don't have teeth, the bone's turning over. Okay. Well, how do these medications work? They prevent bone turnover. Okay. Anti-resorptive. That way, if the bone doesn't turn over, it can't be resorbed. Okay. If it's not resorbed, you maintain your bone density. Okay. Well, if you're not turning over in the mouth... A different environment, it can lend itself to developing bone that's not healthy. Okay. What we would call necrotic bone, and that's when the the you know the disease process becomes right. emrange. Okay, so for these people that are on these certain medications, what can be done to help prevent emrange? Well, I think it's important to note ahead of time is let the importance of these medications should be noted. They serve a purpose. So mm-hmm. I, I don't want the impression to be that uh, you know you want to avoid these. If you can prevent a hip fracture, which has significant morbidity, mm-hmm. that's worth it. We can treat the emrange. Right. It may be harder to treat the hip fracture. So I think that's something we need to start. Yeah, Two, if you have malignant disease, has to be you have to have that treatment. Mm-hmm. There, this is kind of a non-negotiable thing. So what do we do? We help you through it. Mm-hmm. And so what are the, some of the thought processes is, okay, there's a chance you're going to be on this medication. If you're having a discussion with your physician or your oncologist, let's have a plan ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So one of the strategies is see your dentist, get a good evaluation and anything that's concerning at the moment, loose teeth, gum disease, 
teeth that need extraction, whatever it may be, needs to ideally, in a perfect world, be done before you initiate the medication. So then if you find Emerange in a patient, how do you treat it? You know, in the purest form from a clinician, there's a staging system that helps the clinician with how they're going to manage this disease process. In general terms, though, if the patient comes in, and they just have some vague symptoms, but no exposed bone, which is a possibility, mm -hmm. then they may be just uh, seen under observation or their, their dental health or oral health may be optimized. That's step one. However, say they come in and all of a sudden they are having some pain and they do notice exposed bone, then it depends on where they fall in that staging classification as to what's gonna happen next. So for instance, in stage one, they have exposed bone, but they're mm -hmm. asymptomatic. Right. So then that case, probably putting them on oral rinses, probably maybe even a prescription rinse, versus they have stage two, same exposed bone, but now they have symptoms, pain, mm -hmm. and matter of fact, we can see some signs of infection. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen there? Same rinses, probably, same oral health hygiene, mm -hmm. but we're going to maybe start antibiotics. Right. Okay. So why is it best to have an oral maxillofacial surgeon do work on Emerange? Yeah, interesting question. I think part of it is our knowledge and understanding of the jaws and the disease process, but also what we haven't talked about yet is there is a component here where we're going to perform surgery potentially. And as surgeons, in this environment, this is our area of expertise. That's why we are an important part of the team. Because the next stage, if you have exposed bone, but it's progressing, then we might need to consider surgical options. Right, absolutely. So this has been fascinating, Dr. Mira, as we wrap up. Anything else you want to add about Emranj? I think it's just something that we need to talk more about, mm -hmm. um, something that patients who have a sense about this need to talk to their doctors, too, about duration of treatment. Not so much for the IV medications, because those are usually cancer-related, but mm -hmm. for the oral. There is a question, how long is long enough to prevent further bone loss in osteoporosis? Mm -hmm. And I've seen patients been on them for 7, 10 years. And the question is, do they need them that long? Right. So that's something I think maybe for the future is one item to know. How long should, okay. is ideal? And maybe that's patient specific. And mm -hmm. the second thing for people to know is the risk is still low. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we really hit on that. So if you're taking an oral medication, the yeah. global risk to somebody is less than 1% chance you're going to develop the disease. Okay. Emrange. If you're on an IV form, the more potent form, you're still likely not much more than 1% chance, one out of 100 that you're going to develop the disease. So right. the theory, this is not to be scary. This is to know this is a real disease process. It can be managed, and you need to have some good understanding of what you're dealing with. Right, but it is rare, so that's kind of the, the bottom line on that. Right. That's right. Wow. Well, this has been great. Dr. Mira, thank you so much for your time. I uh, appreciate having the chance to talk with you, and uh, hopefully this is of interest to the patients and the public. Absolutely. Well, it sure is. Once again, that's Dr. Dan Mira. And for more information on the full podcast library, please visit myoms.org. And if you found this podcast interesting, please share it on your social media, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening.